So we're here in the Lower Shankill Estate at this mural which is referred to by the locals as being the Shankill Mona Lisa. It looks like, in this part of the wall in particular, it looks like it's been subject to a petrol bomb attack. And there's always been a divide here between these communities. Hello folks, my name's Mark. Today we're going to be visiting a few interesting spots throughout the Shankill Road area. Let's go. So this is the main peace wall in Belfast. This is Coupar Way. It used to be a street called Coupar Street. And there's always been a divide here between these communities. And on the left-hand side of the street used to live mostly Catholic families, the right-hand side mostly Protestant families. And there's always been conflict between these communities. It just tumbles down, father to son, father to son. It started off in 1969 as temporary makeshift barricades. And as the violence intensified, they built this more permanent structure of the peace wall and they've been adding to this peace wall ever from it. So the wall is in three sections. It started off this concrete wall with a bit of barbed wire along the top of it and they realised that it wasn't high enough, that things were still being thrown back and forward, petrol bombs, blast bombs. So by about 1982 they added on that corrugated iron and again they found that it was, still wasn't high enough, that things were still going back and forward. So a couple of years after that, they put on that wire cage. So it's been built in three sections throughout the different years. The wall has seen a lot of violence throughout the generations. And you can see it still bears the scars of some attacks that have, have happened. It looks like, in this part of the wall in particular, it looks like it's been subject to a petrol bomb attack. Today, the government would like to see the wall being removed. It's the people who live within the vicinity of the peace wall that wanted to stay. The government came out. 10 years ago to remove the wall, people from both sides, local people from both sides came out to protest to keep the wall up. Eventually the government done a consultation and they found that 90% of the people living within the vicinity of this wall wanted to remain. Over 90% of the schools in this country today are still segregated into Catholic schools and Protestant schools. So we would need to really focus more with children today and getting children educated together from the beginning of their school lives when they're four years old, where they just want to play and make friends, start developing together, and then we can start talking about removing the peace walls. So we're at this memorial dedicated to the 36th Ulster Division here at Moscow Street outside the Rex Bar. And the 36th Ulster Division suffered mass casualties on the 1st of July 1916. 1st of July 1916 was the bloodiest day ever in British war history and the 36th Ulster Division were the only British division to obtain their objective on that day. Nobody else made it out of no man's land apart from them. When they broke through the German lines, no reinforcements came to help them and they were literally wiped out. So throughout the course of World War I, there was more Irish Catholics fought and died fighting for Britain than what there was Protestants. This is something that's often neglected. Irish Catholics were waved off as heroes, the go to face a common enemy in Europe, but by the time the war had ended, Ireland was a different place. The Easter Rising happened halfway through World War I, and many of those Irish Catholics who did survive the war on coming home now found themselves being treated as traitors in their own homeland for having wore that British uniform. So we're here in the Lower Shankill Estate at this mural which is referred to by the locals as being the Shankill Mona Lisa. Um, in recent years, the murals, the themes have changed. Um, uh, the, the tourists seem to find these paramilitary type murals more interesting. This is the type of murals that the tourists like to see. So we're here at the, in the Lower Shankill Estate and you can see behind me these three towers of Remember, Respect and Resolution. There would have been a mural here of Oliver Cromwell and a depiction of Protestants being massacred from 1641. And as an act of goodwill, they removed, the, the, they removed this mural and put these three towers here in its place. And what they're stating is that remember, that it's okay to remember the past. The past is the past. There's no way of going back to change what's already happened. We can learn from it, but we can never go back and change it. And respect, if we're to have a lasting peace, we need to find a way to respect each other, each other's traditions, religions, and cultures, and resolution, that there will be disagreements, as long as those disagreements are resolved peacefully and democratically, well then we'll all live in a better world. So we're at the top of Enfield Street here on the Shankill Road. Um, this beautiful piece of artwork was done by a, a famous street artist, a man called Dan Kitchener. 
and working along with local youth groups and children from this area, they collectively come up with this idea of this Shankal Black Taxi in a Tokyo street. Black taxis have been a popular form of transport for decades in this area. Um, and it's just to let children know that, that they can go anywhere, they can do anything. They're not restricted to small areas, that the world is opened up for them today and they can feel safe and confident no matter where they go.